Hello YouTube, welcome to a new installment of the hypertrophy series. We are talking warm-up sets today. Warm-up sets are for the most part disregarded in the bodybuilding slash powerlifting slash lifting community because people just consider them to be something that leads to the sets that are actually important, aka art sets. I'm here to tell you that they are much more important than you think. We are going to define what junk volume is in more details, I've already started. It is true that a warm-up set, for many reasons, is not going to be as conducive to hypertrophy as hard sets. Why? Because you're using less weight, you're not in any relevant intensity window for the most part, your muscles are not warm yet, so the strength that you're actually able to develop is not your true strength, so you're not really pushing. Uh, when you start warming up for squats, maybe your top sets are going to be with 390, but when you put 275 on the bar, it's going to feel weird. You're going to feel awkward, you're not going to feel strong. And if you were to use the strength and the easiness of the 275 reps, you would never assume that you have the ability to rep 390. And some people actually let that get to their heads and they get psyched out. But when you know where you stand in terms of strength, you also know that your warm-ups are not a good indicator of whether or not you're going to be performant because you're not warm, right? So your muscles are not fully pumped, your tendons are not fully uh, lubricated, you're not at your maximum ability to use your leverages to push weight. And yet, those reps that you do to uh, rise up to the maximum amount of weight you can push still have their benefits. One, they actually participate to overall tonnage, even though they are not in, an, in any relevant intensity window for the most part. It's still tonnage. It's still the muscle fibers that have to produce the work so that you can push the weight. There are still some damage being created, although it is minimal. Keep also in mind that as you pyramid up to get to your more uh, intensive sets, you're still going to push some relatively heavy weight in regard to your overall strength. If your max again is 390 for a few reps on the squats, 310 is, or is in an intensity window that is relevant. And if I flip what I just told you on its head, understand that because you're not fully warmed yet, you're, act, you're artificially increasing the intensity of those reps. Some people I personally don't advise people to do that, but some people say that walking a muscle when it's cold is actually more efficient because you destroy more muscle fiber, which explains why warm-up sets are so hard. It's not really that you're not coordinated. You've been squatting for years. It's that the muscle is not ready. You're surprising the muscle. You're shocking the muscle. I personally would never do that. I would never squat heavy without warm-ups because the risk of injury is too high because your muscle is not elastic enough and the tendons are not ready for that load yet. But it's a good way to think about warm-ups. When you have that difficulty that arises with a weight that is barely 50%, that's what's happening. It's artificial difficulty, but it's a good thing because it makes the tonnage that they give you a little bit more relevant because now you're doing them in a different fashion. You're not ready for that yet. Another good thing that warm-up warm sets provide is they give you the ability to practice your technique. And technique for hypertrophy and for bodybuilders is super important because a proper technique is going to prevent injury, which keeps your tonnage stable and is going to help you direct the work towards the muscles you want to work. When you do your squats, if you start with 135 and you feel like you're using, for example, too much lower back. You can tweak your form, you can walk your way up to the point where finally the weight will be used to develop the quads. Without the warm-up sets, you wouldn't have the ability to recalibrate your form so that when you squat heavy finally, you're on the ball, you're ready for the tonnage to go where it's supposed to go. And that is something that is highly important. This is why some people say that doing two sessions a day of one hour each instead of doing one session of two hours is more beneficial. Why? Because you're retaking those warm-up sets, which shows you that they're not garbage and you shouldn't rush through them. Don't
don't do your warm-ups as just an, app uh, an appetizer that finally lead you to your main lifts. Go through them properly, feel your muscles work, and move the way you intend to move. A lot of people will tell you that you have to move your warm-ups fast. Because if you don't, then you're going to lift the heavy weights slow. I'm not a powerlifter. Uh, I'm not a strong man. I don't like that advice at all. I think you should take the tempo that is going to be the most conducive to being nice and warm and that is going to make you feel confident in moving the weights. For me, for example, I'm squatting 375 right now. When I do three plates, I don't want to jerk the way up. I don't want to push that bar with everything I have because it's not conducive to me performing well. I would much rather take it slow and I sometimes even pause it just for the heck of it, just to show myself, hey, I can pause it. I don't. I don't need to explode up, this is baby weight. And it's also a way to psychologically program myself so that when I finally have that 375 on my back, it doesn't feel as straining. So that is going to be, for this hypertrophy series, the message I try to convey to you. Warm-ups participate to your overall tonnage. And if you think about it also, if you do what is called back-off sets, what essentially is a back-off set? Most of the time, you use the same amount of weights that you used for one of your warm-ups on the back of sets. So why are those considered to be good for hypertrophy and the warm-up sets aren't? Well, on one hand, you can say that you're pre-fatigued by the heavy weight of the main hard sets, and therefore, because of the back of sets coming afterwards, even though they are the same range of intensity technically as the warm-up sets, they are artificially higher because you're in a fatigued state. And that is 100% true. But the discrepancy between the two is not enough to be able to say that this is suddenly quality tonnage and this is absolutely terrible. This is also why I encourage you to think about your uh, warm-ups as a part of the program that needs to be thinked about. Don't just slap random plates on the, on the bar and just go as fast as you can until you get to the working set. Think about the jumps you're doing. Think about the weeks after weeks after weeks. How are the jumps affecting you? You will find that the way you uh, put weight on the bar leading to the max weight you're going to work on for your strength work has a direct impact on your ability to handle that strength work, to be performant on it and to progress. So please keep it in mind. Don't just disregard warm-ups. And that's it for this hypertrophy series. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.